Hello, and welcome to the Computing Conversations column. This column is from the August 2012 issue of IEEE Computer and is titled, Teaching the World, Daphne Kohler and Coursera. There is supporting video material for this column you can find in the IEEE Computer Society YouTube channel or in the IEEE Digital Library. I'm the editor of the column and I'm Charles Severance from the University of Michigan. The MIT Open Courseware Project, now more than 10 years old, laid the foundation for widely sharing course materials developed across higher education. In the past few years, there's been increasing interest in moving from the simple sharing of course materials by forming a cohort of learners and mentors around open source materials to develop a more course-like online experience. In 2007, David Wiley of Utah State University pioneered the idea of opening an on-campus course to remote participants around the world. George Siemens of Athabasca University, Stephen Downs at the National Research Council of Canada, Dave Cormier of the University of Prince Edward Island, and others have expanded the envelope of these increasingly larger and more innovative open courses. In the fall of 2011, Stanford University opened three computer science courses, databases, machine learning, and introduction to artificial intelligence, to any student with an interest in the material. I recently spoke with Daphne Kohler, a professor in the Department of Computer Science at Stanford and co-founder of Coursera, an online education platform about these courses. According to Kohler, the decision to open the courses to wide participation was done late in the summer before the fall semester started. It was kind of a bit of a last-minute decision to uh, try out these classes in this format, and I don't think anyone anticipated the extent to which this uh, would take off and have this huge impact um, and uptake in, in the world. So, so really you kind of were laying down a lot of the early code in the fall. Yeah. <laughs> so what happened was uh, in... I think August um, is when the decision was made, and we realized that the platforms that we had been using inside Stanford were just not up to the task of uh, being available uh, robustly to hundreds of thousands of students, or even tens of thousands, which is what we thought we would have at that point. And so we started to build up a platform uh, from scratch using uh, a group of uh, a graduate student and three undergraduates, just unbelievably talented individuals who ended up also being the core group that uh, would form the engineering team of, uh, of Coursera down the line. Each of these three courses had an online enrollment of more than 100,000 students. The high level of interest for this type of open distributed learning experience led to the formation of Udacity and Coursera companies, as well as the MIT and Harvard edX project. Kohler founded Coursera along with Andrew Ning, also a Stanford computer science professor, who initially had been approaching scalable education from a different perspective. For me, this project started about four years ago when a group of us who had been award-winning faculty were invited by John Brovman, who was then the vice provost for undergraduate education at Stanford, and he invited us to talk about how to open up more room in the curriculum for a meaningful engagement between faculty and students. And there were a bunch of us in the room, and ideas were thrown around, nothing particularly gelled. Um, and then two months later, I happened to be at a Google faculty summit listening to a talk about YouTube. And all of a sudden, I, it came to me that instead of lecturing in the classroom, the same lecture that I'd been giving for 15 years, telling the same jokes at the same time, maybe we could take that and preserve it and, in fact, make it available to students in a much more engaging format that has more interaction than you get in the classroom. And then in parallel to that, my uh, colleague and co-founder, Andrew Ng, was actually working on a different trajectory, which is let's teach the world, and ended up developing pieces of the design and technology and pedagogy independently in the context of this other project. And at some point, we realized that the projects were remarkably well aligned because the same ideas, the same designs, the same content could be used for both improving the quality of the instruction for our on-campus students and for offering a meaningful course experience for the world. Once they formed Coursera, Kohler and Ning went quickly about approaching other universities to become partners in producing the content. As Kohler describes, It seemed clear that in order to let this have as the largest impact that it could possibly have in terms of teaching all these people around the world who would never have access to this kind of high-quality education, we needed to 
make this available not just to Stanford, but to a number of top institutions who could offer their great content to um, all of these people. And so that's when we decided to spin this out of Stanford and make this, uh, build up this platform that would provide this great experience for students, as well as a good experience for faculty to effectively author these large online classes that they could open to the world. Teaching courses to student cohorts ranging from tens of thousands to more than 100,000 affects the pedagogy and design of the courses as well as the technology to support them. The backbone of the courses is video lectures that are less than 15 minutes long. These lectures have embedded assessments to help the students gauge their learning. Because it's not practical to hand grade assignments for these large course sizes, automatic or peer grading technologies have been developed to make grading tractable. One advantage of automatic grading is that students get immediate feedback to inform their learning. Getting student questions answered in such a large course is another challenge that requires a fresh approach. According to Kohler, One of the things that we tried to build in is an opportunity for students to interact with each other in meaningful ways and have one student help each other through the hard bits and, and have the students work together to achieve a better outcome for everyone. And so, for example, we had a question and answer forum where students really were the primary ones responsible for answering each other's questions. And there was a real community built up around that where students felt incredibly motivated to help each other and answer each other's questions to the point that in the fall quarter of 2011, the median response time for a question posted on the forum was 22 minutes, which is not a level of service that I as an instructor had ever offered to my students. But because there was such a broad worldwide community of students all working together, there was, even if you were doing something at 3 o'clock in the morning, chances are that somewhere around the world there would be somebody who's awake and thinking about the same problems. Students also form study groups based on geographic proximity or areas of interest. So it turned out that study groups is something that we hadn't built, in the, built into the platform originally. It's something that we will do soon, but it, but it grew organically. So people basically, without even being suggested to do that, um, ended up constructing uh, study groups on the Q&A form. So they said, we have a study group in London who wants to join, or we have an, uh, a study group of, uh, of Arab speakers or Hispanics or different types of groupings depending on you know, uh, geography or language or, um, or sometimes other things. We have uh, in one class a global study group, which is specifically people who are looking to con connect with people who are not a part of their local culture and geography. And so um, this was really a fun thing for the students. And some of them met physically, those that had uh, geographical proximity, and others just communicated in the virtual space. But, um, but this organic growth was just such a power thing for, um, for students that we really quickly realized that we needed to build this into the platform. It's interesting that the leadership of Coursera, Udacity, and edX are all computer science researchers, perhaps pointing to the fact that a large part of the challenges in building new technologies to support teaching and learning at scale require truly innovative solutions. The early efforts can be greatly improved and many technical and pedagogical problems remain to be solved. Even with the challenges that we still encounter in teaching at scale, it appears that we have taken the next step toward a vision for open education, according to Kohler. Our dream is that anyone around the world will have an internet connection, maybe via mobile device, which seems to be the way to go in most developing countries right now because of the way the infrastructure is developed or not developed until now, and that people will be able to learn the things that they care about, and some of these will be things that are pragmatic and will help them get a better job and make more money so they can support their families, and some of them will be just ways to expand one's understanding and one's imagination by learning amazing things that you didn't know about because I think it's unfortunate that for most of us, learning ends when we finish high school or when we finish college and that's the last time we learn anything. And wouldn't it be really cool if we had access to a lifelong learning experience that um, where you could come and say, I think this is a really cool topic and I'd like to learn more about that and you would have access to a really amazing course taught by the top scholar in his or her field that could teach that. The experience that began at Stanford in the fall of 2011 has put the idea of providing open and scalable educational experiences into our collective consciousness. It will be interesting to see how far we progress down this path in the next few years. This column is from the August 2012 issue of IEEE Computer and is titled, 
Teaching the World, Daphne Kohler and Coursera. There is supporting video material for this column you can find in the IEEE Computer Society YouTube channel or in the IEEE Digital Library. I'm the editor of the column and I'm Charles Severance from the University of Michigan.